Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. In my previous video, LexD Containers 101, I described how to install and configure LexD, and also how to bridge a container to your main LAN and get an address from your DHCP server. So what are LexD virtual machines? I have reviewed Docker, LexD, and virtual machines on the channel in many other videos. LexD containers just contain the user space of a distribution and through partitioning mechanisms like cgroups and a common kernel with the host, a container appears to be a separate machine. If the host does not support everything that you need for your application, a virtual machine runs an entire OS. If your LexD host has hidden dependencies on systemd as an example, your app may not run well as a container. So a LexD VM provides an entire OS in a container and uses the LexC CLI to make use of kernel virtual machines and QEMU, which are the Linux VM components. So why is a LexD VM different? Well, LexD version 4.0 natively supports virtual machines with a built-in agent to access QEMU components and behave almost like containers. Starting with LexD version 3.19, it was possible to create containers as well as virtual machines, and that integration has improved. Launching a VM requires passing information to it that connects to it at boot time, and this is referred to as a cloud init profile. The cloud init profile enables things like SSH, it adds a non-root user Ubuntu and a password of Ubuntu, and it also adds it to the LexD group, adds the Bosch shell, and you can sudo without a password. This allows for initial configuration of your LexD virtual machine. So LexD VMs can run Arch Linux, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Gentoo, OpenSUSE, and Ubuntu because there are pre-built images for those particular OS. Since they are VMs, it's also possible to create your own custom image, images to run containers, and you can run operating systems such as Microsoft Windows, although there are quite a few steps, and I may decide to cover that in a future video if there's interest. So we will compare running LexD Ubuntu image with a LexD VM Ubuntu image in this particular tutorial. You may want to take a look at the other 12 or so videos I have that address the use of specific features of LexD containers and networking that goes along with them. I will expand on building other containers in future videos. So let's go demonstrate LexD virtual machines. So let's do a little bit of a review. And first of all, I'm at my host system, which happens to be my desktop. And I'm going to do a uname-a, which is going to give us information about the kernel that's running on my host machine, which it says it's 5.15. And that's because I've updated to version 22.04 of Ubuntu. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to create a LexC or LexD container uh, the way we did in the previous video and that is we're going to create it out of my main network and it's going to be called test and it's going to use the default profile to set up the storage and it's also going to use the bridge profile to provide an address on my main LAN. So now <clears throat> we're creating the test container and it's created. If I do Alexi list, it'll take a little while to get an IPv4 address and once it does, we'll connect to it. So now that it's been running for a while, we'll do Alexi list 
and we can see that 172.16.1.234 is an address that the test container has gotten out on the main LAN, which is exactly what we expected. And if we do Alexi exec on test in the Bosch shell, and we do a uname a, the kernel that it got was the kernel from the host. And if we exit back out to the host and do another uname a, you will see that the kernel is identical because the LexD container shares the kernel from the host. So according to the documentation, you have to use this cloud init file that I've got here in order to set up the LexDVM to have a username and password. And you can see here, we do a LexC init Ubuntu, and we're saying 18.04, and we're gonna call this VM-test, and we put a dash dash VM on the end of it. And then we're providing input for this cloud init file that is right here. So the cloud init file basically contains which image we're going to go get from the repository. It also says that we're going to create a user called Ubuntu. And then this is the encrypted version of the password Ubuntu, which we can change later. And it's not locking the password so that we can change it. It's adding us to the LexD group. It's giving us a boss shell and it's setting that configuration and starting it. So if I copy this entire thing and I go ahead and put it into the terminal, it should execute. So it says it's creating the VM test and it added the device to the VM test and presumably it also started the VM test. So if I say Lexi list now, you can see that I have my original test VM and I have this other. So I have the ability to connect to the console on this thing and see what's going on. And in order to do that, I can do a Lexi console vm dash test and it will connect to the console and we would if we connected to it quickly enough we would have noticed it go through all the normal boot up sequence that you would see on either a bare metal machine or a hardware machine and you can type ubuntu as the username you can type ubuntu as the password and we're logged in. So this is, um, and, and also you're able to sudo, and we don't have any problems doing that because of what was in the cloud init file. And um, if we do a uname dash A on 1804, which is actually pretty old version of Ubuntu, you can see that its kernel is 4-15. 4.15.0, if we exit out and we disconnect from the console and the command to disconnect from the console is control A and I Q. And once you do that, we can do a uname dash A back at my host. And you can see my host is running 5.15. So this kind of proves that this thing is an entire virtual machine. And if I do a Lexi list again, you'll also notice that out in the type column, instead of saying it's a container, it's a virtual machine. So the cloud init file was supposed to be a requirement back in the earlier time when they first provided uh, LexD VMs, but I don't believe it's a requirement anymore based on some other testing I've done. So now as another test, I can do a 
Lexi launch Ubuntu 2004, and I'm going to call this VM test 2, and the profile will be default, but I'm also going to add the bridge profile, which if you recall, um, bridges my container to my main LAN. I'm setting the auto start flag and I'm saying this is a VM. So the only thing I added to this uh, from my last video was the dash dash VM on the end. And so it's going to go off and create itself. And if I say uh, Lexi console VM dash test two, we can see all the boot up commands coming up and it is restarting the system right now I don't know why ah there we go so it's doing all the login all the login and all the boot process that we would normally see with a VM now if I do a control A and a Q it'll drop back out of the console and if I do a Lexi list you can see that this VM is still trying to obtain an IP address an IPv4 address and now that we've waited for a minute if we do another Lexi list we can see that it's obtained another address and this address is an address on the mainland also so another thing I want you to notice which I find interesting is that when we created this one bridge to the main LAN in the case of the Lex, uh, Lex D image or container, I should say, it got an address of 172.16.1.234, but the device inside the container is ETH0 because that's what you always expect out of a container. Whereas when we did the VM, uh, bridge to the main LAN, instead of giving us ETH0, it gave us ENP5 or ENP5S0, and ENP5S0 looks like my physical Ethernet address or physical Ethernet device, I should say, on my main system. In fact, if I do an if config, like I did in the last video, and we scroll up here we can see that I have ENP 4S0 so this thing has used the bridge here that we created in the last video but then what it did was it created a new device called ENP 5S0 so I find that interesting and also I'm able to connect to it with the Lexi connect or Lexi exec, I should say, VM dash test two Bosch. And when I'm connected to it, if I do a uname dash A, my VM is running now with Ubuntu 2004 as opposed to 1804. It's running the 5.4.0 kernel. Whereas if I go back to my host OS and I do a uname dash A, you can see that I'm running a newer kernel, which is 5.15.0. So basically, you can tell whether or not you're in a VM or not, because if the kernel differs, you know it's a VM. If the kernel's the same as the host, you know it is a LexD container. So you'll recall from my video where I introduced the LexDware LexD dashboard. It's a very nice GUI to go and manage your LexD instances. And if you've not looked into that video yet, I certainly encourage you to do so. So I now have added my desktop machine because my desktop machine is now uh, has LexD on it. And that's where I've been doing the past few demonstrations. And if I click on it, you can see that it says that it has one container running. And however, it has two virtual machines running. So the container is the one we just created called test, whereas the virtual machines running 
are VM test and VM test two. And you can see that they, uh, the first one that we created VM test where we used the cloud init file, we did not include the profile to bridge to the main LAN. So this has the internal IP address that you would expect from a LexD container ordinarily. Whereas with VM test two, I provided the bridge profile and it got an address on my main LAN. And we also noticed in addition to that, since it was on the main LAN, that it got device ethernet device ENP5S0 and my host device has ENP4S0. So this is all very interesting and it also shows you that you can come up with a more efficient virtual machine that's much easier to start and configure. And of course you can do the similar things with the VMs in terms of connecting to their consoles, adding usernames, installing programs, and everything else you might need to do. So in summary, the LexC CLI provides great functionality to create, edit, and manage LexD VMs in addition to standard LexD containers. LexD VMs virtualize the entire OS as opposed to just the user space like a LexD container. This means that LexD VMs can run their own unique kernel and can also run Windows, which a LexD container cannot. LexD VMs must go through a boot up process and are slower than LexD containers and also use more resources. Anyway, that's it for today and please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.